is cook, but it's always the surface. Are you catching that? So you think like it's well done steak. And you cut it, it's bloody inside. Praise cook it. And if, wow, this guy is spiritual. Look at the way he's jumping and dancing. I give you glory. Oh, he's so holy. You will never know in praise who's who. <laughs> because everybody looks powerful and special. Why? Because the steak is cooked from the outside right away. It's hot fire. Hot fire cooked the steak on the surface, but doesn't penetrate inside. Small cooking fire, worship, adoration, where you begin to die, all right? Between you and God, you forget about the crowd now. You, you become raw. Somebody say raw. raw. And that little flame begin to penetrate the meat from inside. Cook it nicely. Well done. A lot of people in the Christian dumb don't know how to worship, adoration. Because praise does not take focus. Adoration does. Because you can praise and jump and shout out and you don't even think about God. But you cannot adore without thinking about him. It's not possible. Are you catching this? Uh-huh. So I want we take the worship to another level. I'm not talking about the worship team. I'm talking about us in the congregation. You know, to tap into this, I like this melancholic, deep song. I don't want to call them sad because they are not sad. It just sounds like that, all right? They penetrate your core. They take over you. Even the toenail and the hair that are dead cells begin to feel the presence of God. Your whole being get cut up like if you are standing under the fall of the Niagara Falls. You get wet regardless. It crushes you. It's real. It's personal. It's sincere. It's truthful. All the things that are hiding, the layers begin to move away. Until your real you is exposed. I'm not talking about you. I say your real you. <laughs> That's why when Jesus was having a worship talk with the Samaritan, it was interesting. The Samaritan said, as we worship here, you the Jews, you worship on this mountain. Jesus said, oh baby, are you still there? I'm coming to introduce you what is real worship. So far, what you've been doing is related to a mountain or a valley. That's not what I'm talking about. He said, the time is coming and the time has come. And the time is now. Where the true worshipers will worship the Father in what? In spirit and in truth. Not in mental ascent. Not with your head. But in spirit and sincerity. That word is nakedness. Without garment and makeup. When you enter in adoration, makeup disappears. God begin to undress you because it's time for intimacy. <laughs> you, you guys are not catching me, but I know some of you are catching me. I say God begin to undress you. And sometimes it takes a long time to undress us because we have too many clothes on us. <laughs> one and another one. The first one is, you know, I have my dignity. Uh, you don't know who I am, you know. I have to be, you know, I respect myself. I can kneel down and begin to cry in front of people. That, that one goes, boom. And then you think it's over, but there is one, one more need to go. Uh, people are looking at me around like this, uh, you know, uh, this guy needs to respect me. That one also goes. Now you begin to move from the out of court, you're advancing close to the Holy of Holies there. When you get in that place, you're undone. There is nothing about you anymore. You can't even ask him for a car or to heal you. You get in place of worship where you have no demand. You have no request anymore. The prayer request is thrown out during praise. 
But when worship comes, you have less need. Why? Because you begin to have more of him. And the more of him you have, in, the less you need the other stuff. <laughs> Doesn't matter if the song is in Chinese or not, you soak into it. Oh, I, don't, I don't need to hear it anymore. Why? Because it's spirit to spirit. Because the mind needs information. The spirit needs revelation. But I don't understand what it means. Don't worry about it. Let the wave of the prophetic sound touch your spirit. Praise the Lord, somebody. So when we begin to worship today after these verses, I want you to get in the bubble, the worship bubble, where you don't even know if your wife is around anymore. We all, you don't care who's touching your Michael Kors bag, if it's on the floor or not. You have done the groceries anymore. You don't even care you're going to eat today or not. In fact, you don't even know the debts and the bills that are waiting for you. Because worship takes you from the earth realm. And from the need of the earth. When Paul said, remove your eyes from the thing beneath and behold the thing that are above, all he was telling you to do, you can go today in the spirit and live in the dimension of the spirit, even though you think you're a human being, you're a spirit being. The reason your bills make you panic is because you are still on earth. <laughs> when you get caught up in adoration, my friends, you even forget that there's problem waiting for you. Yeah. It's when you come out, you feel like, oh, God, you know, I still need to go pay my bills, my Lord, hallelujah. But you know what? In the midst of that, the breakthroughs line up and you didn't pray for it. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right, let me put it this way for you. Allow me to give you one verse, all right? Here is the people God is looking for. Second Chronicle 16, 9, all right? God's looking for a type of people. Those worshiping spirit are true. We know those ones. But 2 Chronicles 16, 9. It looks like a very strange and strong verse, but it's beautiful. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to what? Say it. To strengthen or to sustain. To stand by. Those whose heart are fully committed to him. God's eyes are not looking for the half and half people. God's heart is looking tonight, today, for the people who are 100% committed to him. Not 99%. We are done with this, brothers and sisters. We could have one foot in the world and one foot in the worship. When you get in worship, there is no part of you that is outside. You are in. That's why people are afraid to enter worship because make them vulnerable. You are no longer in charge. You control nothing. Those hearts are fully committed. In French, he said, le cœur de ceux qui sont sans partage. In never word, a heart that doesn't share with anybody else. Jesus. Another verse, 2 Chronicles 20, 20, 23. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, 23. Everybody knows this one. It's the Joseph at miracle. Look at what happened, all right? 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. Thank you. 2 Chronicles, here. Early in the morning... They left from the desert of the core, and they set out. Joseph has stood and said, listen to me. Did you hear what he said? Who is he talking to? Listen to me, who? Judah and the people of Jerusalem. I don't get this. Why did he have to separate Judah from the other people? Can he not say, listen to me, you Israelites. Oh, you people of Jerusalem, you people of God, listen to me. Say, listen to me, you Judah and the people of Jerusalem. He was speaking to the people who know how to prepare a prophetic worship of deep adoration. He said, hear me, you guys. 
you guys are the one who will prepare this atmosphere. And you the people, you are also a part of preparing this atmosphere. In other words, from today, I want to tell you, you just officially joined the worship team. <laughs> the worship team is not just the people I hear. The worship team is everyone who has the spirit of God. So from today, you cannot remain passive during worship and praise. Because you belong to the worship team. If you don't sing, we will meet the note. We will miss a note. We will miss your note. Don't think it's the people here who need to sing on the note and be a part of it. If they don't sing, we won't hear anything. No. You also, you are a part of the worship team. God is expecting to hear your worship, not these people here. These people here are here to prepare the atmosphere so God can hear you. But yet we let them do the job and we watch them do the job. Some people jump the worship. I just come from the word. I come for the word. It's the word. The word that what I need. I come for the word. How can you come for the word and you didn't come for the worship? How can the word mean anything to you if you have not been in intimacy? I have a strong word. I will leave that for another time. Ow. I just come for the word. You need to come for the worship so the word can be a word for you. If you don't come for the worship, the word is just an information. Because it will stay in your head. Set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, do that and the people. Have faith in the Lord, your God, and you will be upheld. You know, worship begins with faith. Somebody say faith. They say, have faith and you'll be of a, have faith in his prophet and you shall proper, prosper. Look, verse 21 quickly. After consulting the people, Joseph had appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. And they went out at the head of the army. Huh? Watch. Now, they have an army coming to destroy them. These guys have tanks and Machine guns, if we can use it in today's terminology. All right? And they said, what do they have? They have guns and machine guns and tanks and planes. Okay, Bethia, you guys go first. <laughs> this is not fair. <laughs> I mean, get the point. They are going to war against the people who have weapons. And then they said, our army hide behind the worship team. <laughs> you need to catch this. Normally the army is supposed to go, all right? But God said, mm -mm -mm -mm. don't do like they do. Our army does not go first. Our real army is the one who has no physical weapon. So, army hide behind the worship team. And let's go now for war. I mean, this does not make sense to a human being. All right? But it makes sense to your spirit, but not to your mind. Went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord. Hmm? Not even shouting something that can scare them like, ah! No. Give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Next verse. <laughs> and they begin to sing and praise. Getting ready for the funerals. The Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, the enemy, and Moab, and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were what? They were what? There are some victory awaiting in your life to happen, but you're using the wrong tool. I'll tell you the truth. I've been singing lately. I feel like why well, I could record my own disc, you know. Yes. New songs. I don't know where they come from. Sometimes I don't even know which language. But I feel like this is Igbo. It sounds like Igbo. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I said, there are victories in our lives that are awaiting to manifest. But the only thing that will bring them to happen is not prayer or fasting or warfare. You know what is it? Adoration. But we don't do anything in adoration. How can we win? Army, go behind the worship team. You begin to sing. I have a pastor friend of mine. He gave me this testimony years ago. He went to a place and there were so many witchcraft that the demons come in the spirit to kill him. And uh, he could feel something is about to hit him. And suddenly he was about to begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. God said, don't say that. He said, Lord, I feel the attack. He said, don't say that. He said, but you tell us to use your name. He said, not for this one. No. <laughs> he said, what? He said, begin to sing this song that I gave you this morning. And he began to sing a song that nobody knows. The demon ran away. Adoration. Where you get sold out to God, let me tell you what's happened. You are so surrendered to God that you are so focused on him that what you are supposed to do, God begins to do it for you. You know why? God cannot worship himself. All right? So when you do it for God what he can do for himself, he begins to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah! He can worship himself. So when you worship him, he says, okay, thank you for doing what I cannot do for myself. Give me your list now. I will do for you what you will have never been able to do for yourself. That's a word for somebody this morning. <laughs> Through the worship and the adoration, God will mobilize the heaven and begin to intervene on your behalf in places that was impossible. It will become possible today. You just get in him. And he gets in you. And you get in one another. And suddenly you, you forget about your surrounding. You forget about your prayer list. You forget about who didn't kiss you or who was supposed to kiss you. You forget about who had agreed with you or who didn't agree with you. I have come today to give you the means for a victory to be assured for you. Because today we begin to worship him. He will bring a miracle for you, for your children. He will bring a miracle for you, for your finances. He will bring a miracle for you, for your business. He will bring a miracle for you, for your marriage. He will bring a miracle for you, for your project. Just because we're going to worship him. Hallelujah. Mando kashikiti pakata. You know, it's interesting last night. <laughs> A minister six hours and then we fellowship a little bit in Toronto and uh, we, we, I had booked an hotel at the airport so I feel like okay I'm gonna sleep at the airport hotel so Toronto is a big city traffic I don't need to bug anybody I will just go to the terminal and um, this beautiful couple they came to drop me at the airport and then you know my booking was rejected because they didn't have any room so all the hotels in Toronto were booked last night. Fully. Even the smallest place was out. And the biggest place was out. So it's one o'clock now. We are looking for an hotel, but I have to be at five o'clock. I say, you know what? Leave it alone. What hotel? Leave it alone. We have four hours. I say, you guys drop me. They say, no, 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 no. We cannot drop you. We stay together in the car. So we stayed in the car by the airport. I'm sitting in the, beside the driver. The wife is in the back. She is sleeping a little bit. He's sleeping, waking up. And I'm singing for them, for them, and they're putting them to bed for four hours. <laughs> and for four hours, I sing the songs of the Lord in every language. Hallelujah. Even in Hindi. I was on fire singing. I went to the airport. The singing couldn't leave me. I keep singing. I went in the plane. I couldn't sleep. I keep singing. I'm on a 24 hours shift. But I'm on fire. And it's not because I'm ADD. It's because I am intoxicated with his presence. 
I am under drugs, Holy Ghost drugs. You understand what I'm talking about? God has infused me. Some of you have slept 12 hours, but you, you, when time comes to worship, oh, you know, I'm so tired, my back is hurting, I cannot do this, oh my God. No! Everybody needs to worship God today. If not, I'm going to go tell you, hey, 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 you, why are you not worshiping my God? And if you see me coming, you're not really worshiping. <laughs> Can somebody give a hand to the Lord this morning? Yeah, don't see me coming. If not, you're not worshiping. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. You know, I taught you this years ago. If you want to study the Bible, there's a way to study. It is called the law of first mention. In other words, the first time where the word is used will give you an idea of the thought of God about the subject. So the word worship is used here in Genesis chapter 22. When what God spoke to uh, Abraham to pick up his only son and go and sacrifice him on the altar on Mount Moriah. You get that? So when they arrive after three days walking, that's a type of resurrection, by the way, when they get three days after walking by the mountain feet, he turned to his servants. He turned like that. He said, guys, thank you for helping me carry the woods and all this other stuff. And your presence was very meaningful for the three days walk. But you guys stay here. Boy, pick up the wood. Let's go. You see, you have not begun to worship yet until you separate yourself from your surrounding. He said, where I'm going, we can go alone because it's a personal deal. <laughs> this is not, it's not a place of debate, so I don't need you. You know, this is a personal thing, so you guys stay here. All I need is me and the sacrifice. Praise the Lord, somebody. And they walked and they went there. Did they not go? They went to the mountaintop. When he was about to sacrifice the boy, a voice came from him and said, hey, don't do that. Look behind you. There's a ram. You say, a ram? I work in the field. I'm a cattle owner. No ram goes on a mountaintop. No ram. Ram like the plain. They, they don't like the height there. He said, no, there's a ram. He said, no. Angel, are you really sure you're an angel? Don't you know a ram does not get it? It just, just turned back. And he turned, there was a ram. You know, when you get in the place of worship, thing that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> because it, it is just not supposed to happen. All right? That job is too big for you. When we look at your credential, you should never, never even dream one day to apply for such a job. You understand what I'm saying? All right? That's the way the ram is. God will bring you solution in places you never expected that could exist in that place. Just because you worship him. Did you notice there was no music the first time the word worship is used? He says, stay here. The light and I will go up and yonder. That's the word is used. He said, we are going for an adventure. We really don't know where we are going. That's what happens when you worship. You don't really know where you're going, but we are going somewhere, all right? But uh, we're going to yonder. You know, through worship, God can take your business to go yonder. In other words, it takes you in places you never thought that you will go. You are not in control anymore. You are yonder ring. You are discovering. You are in an adventure. I talk to many people and say, you know, I love adventure. I say, how come you don't love worship? Because somebody who loves adoration and worship, it should, the person who is an adventurous person, this is your deal. Because you are not in control, you are adventuring. You are just going, hoping it will be fine. But I don't know where we are going, but I know we are going somewhere. No music, no singing. Yet the word worship is used because worship speaks of sacrifice, not music. He was going to a funeral and they talk about worship. One last verse. Jude, Judges, I was reading this in French. Judges 2018. Judges 2018. Here's another case where the enemy shows up, all right? I'm giving you the key to deal with the enemy. Here's another case where the enemy shows up. The Israelites went up to Bethel 
and inquired of God. They said, Who of us is to go up first to fight against the Benjamin? What was the answer? And the Lord replied, Judah shall go first. Worship, adoration, first all the time if you want to secure your victory. Always. Who shall go first? They look at all the big muscles around who are warriors, I mean intimidators, and they say, no, 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 don't look at that. I want Judah to go first. You know, Judah was the most numerous tribe in Israel. In other words, God wants everybody to worship. That's the message I want to bring you today. As we enter, now hear this word, in the worship in this season, it's prophetic worship. Wisdom will begin to flow. People's heart will begin to change. Heart will begin to be healed. Miracle will begin to happen. Prayer will begin to be answered. I don't know how he will do it, but I know he will do it. And when you come out of there and you begin to pray, you will pray with understanding. Because in worship is a place of intimacy. God begins to whisper to your ears. And then when you come out, you begin to know how to do certain things. Your prayers of warfare and intercession and all type of prayer become more focused. And they begin to be more effective to hit the target. Because you are coming out of the place of knowing instead of wrestling in ignorance. Let's stand up on our feet. Worship team. I want you to feel free. Let's create that atmosphere. And the worship team begin to build us up. I don't want you to be waiting for them to do something for you. Exercise and practice the art of worship, of soaking, singing, Sensing his presence. Relinquishing yourself. Letting the control go. If you want to kneel down, kneel down. You want to sit down, sit down. If you want to flat out, flat out. You want to stay. Do whatever you want, but at the end of the day, I want your mind, heart, and soul today to be engaged. Engaged. Somebody say engaged. Fully on God. I'm done. It's your turn. I'm going to worship too. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We just want to tell God how great He is. Let us rise up as we lift up our hands and tell Him how great He is, how awesome He is. How beautiful he is.